I think it's gonna go up for sale for around 12 million. I'm usually up at 4.30 or 5 a.m. Monday through Friday. I've probably crashed anywhere from five to seven drones. We're projected to do anywhere from 27 to 3,000 homes. My name is Sasha Marcetta, and the business that I own is Skyview Experts, and we started in 2018 in October, so we're still fairly fresh. I've always liked messing around with drones, so I would always take them on vacation and things like that and one day I decided to use the drone to go do construction projects where I would track constructions that are happening around the town so I would message those people and then I would also try to get commercial properties so kind of like vacant land or farms and things like that and then I kind of got sucked into real estate really at the end of the day so I would message some realtors and kind of just took off from there. And then how much did you invest to get started when i first started it was with my family's camera so it was basically it was a fuji sky pixel i think it's called i don't even know it was probably like two three hundred dollars but it was a camera that was nine years old at that time and i shot on that and i was horrible but <laughs> it kind of like progressed from there i would get better and better and turn into this so when i first started in 2018 in october i think from october to december we probably did 10 or 15 jobs maybe so it was very hard to put your name out there so i had to do a lot of things at a discount or I would kind of try to just promote myself the best way I could. So I would reach out to realtors and tell them like, hey, give me a shot. Uh, let me show you what I can do. And then basically next year we would do, you know, I think it was like 50 or 60 jobs the whole year, which it wasn't a lot. And then we just kind of kept doubling. And, and then once COVID hit, we kind of actually ended up having more business because social media became super popular and then now that you're full-time what are your like day-to-day -day operations so doing this full-time is challenging because it's very demanding um so basically i'm usually up at 4 30 or 5 a.m monday through friday and i have my editors where i have to kind of screen everything i go through quality checks i make sure everything's good on the photo side and after that once i'm done looking at it um, I'll email all my clients all their photos because with real estate it's next day service so we always have to deliver next day um, so once I'm done with that usually by 8 or 9 a.m. I'm out the door and doing anywhere from 5 to 10 jobs really on my own and then during winter time we're usually home before 5 because it's dark and then summertime because of the long summer hours we're usually out to like 9 p.m. Uh, sometimes we'll get night shots that we have to do, so we'll stay out even longer. And then, like, what do those include? Like, what equipment are you using? Right now, we're using all Canon uh, cameras. So the Canon R5, the Canon R6, the Canon R5C. And then, as far as the drones that we use, we use all DJI products. So we have the DJI Mavic 3, the DJI Mavic Mini, then we use the DJI Avada for our FPV drones, which is uh, first person view. That's become quite popular in our field, actually. I mean, that's the majority of it. And then obviously we have our MacBook for editing. What are some other like expenses that come along? Right now we're trying to expand our team. So the biggest expense on my end right now is having employees. Um, trying to take care of them, making sure they're compensated correctly. And then the other major part is our editors, um, which is a big chunk. Obviously just traveling because we're always on the go. I got my car the first year I put 45,000 miles on it. So uh, that's a big expense right there, gas money for sure. And um, just all the software subscriptions we have and things like that. What's the furthest you travel? The furthest that I've driven, I think is Traverse City which is about four and a half hour drive from where I live. And that was for pretty nice uh, property out on the lake. And then like, how are you getting them as a client? So when we first started, like I said, we would just message them or try to email them or just go to their office, call them. Um, that's kind of how we first started. We would basically go on Zillow and see what was for sale and see if we could help out an agent by contacting them and telling them we could do a better job. Um, that was one way. And now we really don't market ourselves or advertise. We basically just let everything happen and um, we have a lot of referrals basically. So that's the number one way we get clients is referrals, uh, word of mouth. From jobs or from social media? Jobs for sure. The clients we work with, 
they're all in the office together so they all like to share information actually the since 2019 because of covid and uh, we ended up going viral on social media which has been a huge help so a lot of our clients are also from instagram mainly um that's kind of the main other social media platform we get our clients from we use facebook TikTok, instagram um, those are the big three that we use currently um, we have a good following on TikTok and a good following on Instagram, but Facebook, honestly, we've kind of pushed back. We don't, we're not too active on there. Uh, we're pretty active on YouTube too. We try to post our, you know, whole house tours that are in wide view. So that way people can get a better perspective. Could you break down like your, I guess your pricing structure? So the way with real estate that it works is we usually price based on square footage. We go, if, if the house is 1,000 to 2,000 square feet, 2,000 to 3,000. So every house has a different price based on the square footage. And then whatever services they want to get, whether it's, you know, photos, if they want drone photos, if they want a full video, um, reels are really popular. That's kind of like what we do now a lot of. And then we also include just other services like Matterport, laser measurements, um, virtual staging. So. It just all depends at the end of the day how big the house is and what other add-ons they want to um, add to the service. I would say about 85% is all real estate that we do right now. Then we have the rest of the 15% is kind of lifestyle videos that we'll do for realtors. Um, we get into kind of events that we end up doing for brokerages. There's different, just different events that happen around town that we get contacted sometimes for uh, that they might need a drone operator where someone's not licensed and they, they need us to help out. So we'll do that. Uh, we've covered jet ski races, boat races. We've done ski resorts. So there's all little things that you can get into even golf courses. So there's definitely a lot of other things we do, but our main focus like I said, 85% of it is real estate. And what percent is using like drone footage? Right now, drone has become a big part of every shoot that we do. Um, a lot of realtors they end up getting interior, exterior, then they'll do drone photos. So probably 75% people use our drones to get their listings out in a better way, just because it's a different perspective. If they want to show how big the backyard is or the house or the property, they can do that and it makes it easier. plan on actually hiring a few more people, a few jobs out there uh, that people can apply. That's one thing we want to do. And then we also just want to really grow on social media and help people out on social media, um, especially on Instagram and TikTok, because it's fairly new with Reels. So a lot of realtors and other clients of ours need help with it. So we really want to go in that space where we can kind of help them out in that area because it's crucial to their business. Do you have three tips of advice for growing your business? The first main thing is just be humble and actually try to help that client out. Don't be in it for the money. If you really enjoy what you like, then just do it to truly help them. Two is always be kind to them. Uh, great customer service. Even if you mess up or if there's something happening just always be professional and nice to them three would be actually personality is a big one being very very good with people really helps you out and then actually i have one more my like num my other top one is being on time and just communicating with the client that's very very important from year one october to december in 2018 we did about 15 homes. 2019, I think we did roughly around 60. And then 2020, we did, I think it was like 250. And then we kept doubling. And then in 2022, we ended up actually shooting about 2,100 homes. And then this year, we're projected to do anywhere from 27 to 3,000 homes. So it's a pretty big jump in just five years. But like I said, if you're just 
good with people and you help them out, it goes a long way. The number one reason people should hire us is just the service we provide. We're very strict with our quality and we're always delivering our photos next day between 6 and 9 a.m. Our turnaround time, I think, is probably the fastest in our industry. And like I said, the quality, the service, and the price that you pay for everything is really unmatchable. I mean, we really go above and beyond and we include things like free photoshopping, sky replacements, and just anything that a client kind of wants us to help them out with, we will do it. And like I said, we're there for the client at the end of the day. Can you tell us a little bit about your equipment here? Yeah, so these are the two main drones that we use. Um, the first one is a DJI Mavic 3 Classic. Uh, we also have the Pro, but that one's actually getting repaired. Uh, smart controller that goes with it. Um, just so you can see, uh, it's really clear and on sunny days, it's really bright to see the screen. And then this is the DJI Avada, which is our FPV drone. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen some of our content where we're flying in the houses and um, these drones can do flips. Um, it's basically like you're flying in a way. Uh, we have to wear this headset and once you put this headset on, you can see what the drone sees. So it's a really unique way to show a property. What's one of the drones that you recommend and what's one that you don't recommend? Honestly, my favorite company and my favorite drone that I would recommend is any brand from a DJI. If you're starting in the real estate field, I would go with a DJI Mavic Air 2S, I believe it's called, which is a budget friendly drone that you can really utilize and it gets the job done, has everything that you need and it's really friendly, like it has all these sensors so you won't be crashing into things. Drones that I wouldn't recommend, um, I haven't tried out too many other drones. DJI is kind of the standard. They've kind of had the big market share. I think there's one other company, I forget the name of it, but I would just stick with DJI because that's a known brand and they have good systems in play and they also have things like if you crash it, you can pay anywhere from $100 to $200 and they'll actually replace it for you. So there's benefits of definitely having these drones. Speaking of crashes, how many times do you think you've crashed a drone? <laughs> Since I've been doing this for five years, I've probably crashed anywhere from five to seven drones. Um, luckily, they were all under insurance, but I tend to turn off all the sensors and try to fly under the trees or um, through objects to really get that shot. You gotta sometimes risk the drone to get the perfect shot, so I tend to do that. and. Sometimes it doesn't work out in our favor. How did you learn to fly a drone? I first bought a drone to go to California with my uh, girlfriend back then. And uh, when we went, I put it in track mode. So it was following our car while we were going up a mountain. And I actually ended up crashing that one. It hit the side of the mountain. So that's kind of where it began from is I bought it to go on vacations and to kind of capture everything that my wife now that we do uh, when we're out and exploring, but that's where it began from. Is there like a school or anywhere that you can learn or you think it's best to learn on your own? So the best thing I would recommend if you get a drone is to actually go in an open field, any park, uh, soccer field, I would definitely go there. That's actually the second part. The first part is I would go on the app because you can actually learn how to fly on the app just to get familiar with the, uh, the remote and the sticks and to really know how to maneuver it. So I would do that first and then I would go to an open field and uh, make sure to have it in beginner mode, keep all the sensors on because if you don't, you probably will crash and do not fly it inside the house. I've done that before uh, when I first bought it and luckily I didn't crash, but I came close to it. And then is there any licenses that you need to fly in certain places or? If you're doing this as a hobby, you don't need any license. As long as you're not trying to sell your images or try to make money off it, there's no need for you to get any licensing. But if you are gonna run a business with the drone, if you're going to make any money or do it for other people, that are paying you, you have to get, uh, it's called a part 107 license. And it's a test. I believe it was like 60 questions and you have to get a 70% or above to pass, I believe. And once you take that and you pass, then legally you're allowed to use your drones for commercial purposes. Um, and then also obviously um, you're not allowed to 
fly in any national parks, any airports. There's certain flight restrictions during basketball, football games, things like that. There's always apps that help you with that. So uh, DJI has your own app. If you try to launch your drone and you're in a restricted area, you'll get a reminder to see if you're legally allowed to fly there. So you have to go through a checklist to make sure you qualify or if you have pre-clearance to do so. What's one of the best things and what's one of the worst things about having a drone business? The best thing is obviously the footage you can capture and the services you can provide. So it's definitely an add-on to your business. One of the other downfalls is you have to be very careful. Um, you have to know how to operate it because if these blades hit anybody, they're definitely gonna have to get stitches. Um, they spin really fast and they're super thin, so you have to be careful with that and also just following all the rules and regulations that the FAA has uh, because people have been fined, people have lost their licenses, so you have to be extremely careful with that. Have you done any uh, celebrity homes or is there anyone's home that you would want to do? Here in Michigan, I think we have done some, but we can't say it. Um, I know we've done a few hockey players and basketball players. Right now we're recording John Sally's old mansion, which was in the Detroit uh, Palmer Woods. The mansion is 35,000 square feet. And I think it's gonna go up for sale for around 12 million. So it's the largest residential house right now in Michigan and in Detroit area. As far as celebrities, I think it'd be pretty cool to do really anybody's. I mean, anybody that's living out there in California, they have like some sweet homes. So that'd be a pretty cool opportunity, but maybe one day.